Hey guys, what's up? I'm Heyman. Welcome back to this channel. So I have prepared a small prototype to make you understand how actually AMP for email works. In the past, I have made a couple of videos on interactive email, but those are very specific for a particular area. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about end-to-end -end scenario and we'll discuss in detail. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is AMP for email. We'll be seeing a little bit more about AMP for email and how it works before proceeding further. And next thing we'll be discussing about end-to-end -end architecture of the prototype which we have been developing. Like all the sections we'll be covering uh, according to our requirement. We'll take the requirement, we'll see the demo and we'll see how we have been developing this particular prototype. Okay. And the next thing we'll be discussing about how we are handling course requirement for M4 email. All right guys, at the end of the video, I'll be sharing some useful and important stuff. So please stick with me and watch this video till the end. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so now what is M4 email? You know, before discussing about M4 email, let's talk about Google AMP first because M4 email is a subset of Google AMP. So Google AMP is an open source framework initiated by Google in 2015 and its sole purpose is to make whole mobile user experience as fast as possible. So in order to achieve this faster experience, it follows some technique just like discarding complete unnecessary CSS and JavaScript while loading the pages Google ads on emails. And it follows a caching mechanism behind the scenes as well. And if you want to read more about it in detail, then you can follow the public official documentation of Google AMP. So Google AMP framework provides the support majorly for three sections, web pages, emails, and Google ads. Here we are mainly focusing on emails, which is called AMP for email. So in this sections and in this demo, in this prototype, we'll be discussing about M4 email. I would say M4 email is a revolutionary technique which provides interactivity and dynamic content in the email. So if you talk about old fashioned email, then only the static content we can send in the email. So which is not very engaging and appealing. On the other hand, if you talk about interactivity and more engaging content, then uh, M4 email comes into the picture and industries are also looking forward to adopt interactive nature of the email content. Now let's look at the architecture of the interactive email prototype which we have been developing. But before that let's try to understand the problem statement and look at the demo so that it will make much more sense while discussing the architecture and all the sections in between. Now let's look at the behavior of old fashioned email for survey or marketing purpose so that later we can easily compare our solution. I received this email from Indigo, they want to take my feedback. So if I click 9, then they are opening a new tab and redirecting me to a different web application. Let's take another example of Amazon. I got this email from Amazon. If I click on this button, I'll be redirecting again to a new tab. So we are solving this problem with interactive email. I have already sent an interactive email to our customer. Before interacting with the email content first, let's verify the previous feedback submission. So this is the Salesforce platform where our customer's feedback will be stored and through this list view we can see all the feedbacks. We'll talk about all the things in detail and develop it together. For now we'll refresh it and see how many responses we have. We have only one response. Now let's go back to email and try to submit the feedback on behalf of a customer. If a customer is a detractor, say customer choose the option between 0 to 6, that means he or she is not happy, then we may wanna ask other questions to know what is wrong with our services. After filling the feedback, customer wants to submit it. If you notice here, response is getting submitted and it got submitted successfully without leaving the Gmail client. Let's verify the response which we have submitted. Now we'll go to the Salesforce platform and hit refresh. We got two responses and second one we just submitted. So this kind of interactivity. So you got the problem statement, right? Old fashioned static email versus interactive and dynamic email. So here in this prototype, all the interactivity and dynamic content will be achieved by M4 email and all the backend side data modeling and storage things will be handled by Salesforce platform. So eventually we need to integrate these two platforms, right? M4 email to uh, Salesforce so that all the wiring things can happen and the data flow can happen. So I have made specific videos on these topics, how you can prepare M4 email template and send it to your email client, Gmail client specifically, and uh, how you pre can prepare entities and rest APIs in the Salesforce platform so that you can submit the data in the Salesforce platform. If you are using the Salesforce platform and otherwise you can, uh, you can use any database or any backend system. Fine. This is my prototype, so I have developed this way. 
so now most important topic comes how we are dealing with course requirement in our prototype for m4 email if you want to know more about this course process how this option header as a pre-flight request comes before the main request comes then you can uh, follow some link i have given in the description down below you can check that out for more understanding but for now let's proceed further so in the salesforce platform i didn't find a way to set all the course mandatory headers in the response object so what i did i introduced a middleware in node.js uh, rest api through express where i'm setting all the course required course headers in the response object so let's look at the node.js rest api how we are receiving that uh, all the data from the m4 email template and setting the course headers and invoking the Salesforce API and dumping the data into the Salesforce system. Guys, before proceeding further, I would say you should have basic understanding on Node.js before looking into it. Okay guys, so we are already in REST API Express project. Let's discuss this uh, server.js. So I'm using HTTP package to create a server, not, not Express, because I just wanted to divide that Express and server thing separately. Okay, so this app.js is our main file where I'm creating a REST API through Express package. Morgan package I'm using to log the request and body parser to parse data in JSON format. And here I'm uh, declaring this feedback.response our routes, uh, routes basically. And uh, here I'm creating some middleware to use to parse the JSON format and declare the route. So this means whenever I'm invoking this feedback response in the URL as a resource, then uh, feedback response routes, this gets called. And uh, I'm declaring some, I'm handling some errors here. Okay, so if you look at this feedback response, then uh, I'm handling this get request here and post request here. So our main focus is in the post request where I'm actually handling the course, uh, setting the course headers in the response object. I'm trying to establish a connection here by providing login URL and some credentials. If you look at here, I'm just trying to get the data from the request object and preparing the body object and passing it to the Salesforce API. Preparation of REST API in the Salesforce platform. I have made it a separate video for that. Please look at that if you haven't already. Our main purpose is to create this REST API to uh, set the course headers, mandatory headers in the response. Okay guys, so now let's test this uh, API if it's working or not. I'm just starting my npm local server here it got started now if you uh, see this is the feedback response we have right here in the, in the app if you see uh, this is the this is the resource we have so if you see localhost feedback response and uh, let's look at the body this is the nps response and text response these two inputs uh, i'm expecting uh, from the m4 email template so i have filled this out and uh, let's try to send the request i'm sending post request and here we go we got response submitted successfully and uh, response data got submitted in the salesforce platform as per the demo we have seen right okay so this is it guys about this uh, about this rest api express call i have provided this complete code in the github uh, you can find this github link in the description down below you can check that out and for your reference you can refer it as well Okay, now I would like to discuss one catch here. Okay, let's prepare the M4 email template. Okay, here you need to provide the XHR call. And uh, if you look at this one, according to our local host, this should be our XHR call. And when I copy and paste it, if you see invalid URL protocol, obviously we need to provide some HTTP header, HTTP protocol or HTTPS, right? Then it is saying, uh, invalid URL protocol HTTP for attribute action SHR fine so you need to provide uh, HTTPS protocol okay guys here's the catch uh, see localhost by default is an HTTP protocol right so either you somehow you have to set up the certification thing in your localhost or you need to deploy this REST API in some server fine so for our demo purpose I have deployed this REST API thing in Heroku that's how my complete flow is working because I am providing here in the action XHR, I'll be providing that uh, the deployed REST API Heroku link here so that it will give me the HTTPS protocol. It will complete the wiring after that. Okay, so deploying this Node.js REST API in Heroku, I'll be demoing in the next video. Till then, stick with me. Okay, guys, if you like this video, please don't forget to click on like button. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any query and suggestions, please comment it down below. I'll be happy to reply. Till then, see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.